We're now on the final part of Ecclesiastes. Now I'd like to start today's talk by looking at that song that Frank Sinatra sang all these years ago. In this song, you have the whole being of man captured. The whole book of Ecclesiastes really is captured in this song. Let me give you a few examples. He says, I now come to face the final curtain. In other words, the curtain is coming down on his life. And he's standing there knowing that his end is near. And as he says, as I stand and face the final curtain, I'm going to state my case. And the whole of this song is very egocentric. I planned my course. I had this. I did that. I made sure this was right. I made sure that was right. Yes, I have faced the blows. Yes, I've charted my course. Yes, I did it my way. It is a tragedy that man today is, as I said the last time, toying with eternity, gambling that God does not exist. You may be listening to this on YouTube. And as we've gone through Ecclesiastes, we've seen the hopelessness of man living his life without God. And the preacher at the end of this series, he says, I want to draw your attention to one absolute certainty. And it's this, God shall bring every deed into judgment. God will bring every deed into judgment. That is an absolute certainty. You may be living your life as if there is no God. You may be living your life saying there is, there is no God in heaven. I don't believe in God. I'm in this wonderful, blissful situation that God does not exist. But the preacher says that is absolute foolishness. For one day you will have to stand before Almighty God. I've taken many funerals in my time. I had hundreds, literally hundreds. And I've taken funerals of people who do not believe in God. And you know, the number of times I've taken a funeral and the song they've had is the Frank Sinatra song. I did it my way. But friends, if you're going to stand before God, you've got to face him one day and face that challenge. God will ask you, to give an account of your life. So the absolute certainty is this. You can do it my way, or you can do it thy way. You can please yourself and go headlong into eternity without any knowledge of God, and then one day having to face him, or you can live your life now knowing that God is for you. The preacher had said early on in the book of Ecclesiastes that God has placed eternity in the hearts of men. And the challenge is that God does speak to us. Every single man, woman and child, God will speak to us. Because we have a receptive in our, in our bodies that God can speak to. It's eternity. It's that one place where God will challenge us. Now, perhaps you've been challenged throughout your life. But you know, the problem is that when you're challenged, it's so easy to ignore it. And you can suppress that challenge. And in fact, Jesus puts it this way. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. There is a sense in which that receptive inside you, you can suppress so much that the voice of God will never be heard. How tragedy, the tragedy of my way says this, the record says, I did it my way. But that record, you will have to give an account to God for. 
every single word you have ever said, every action you have taken, one day you will stand before the living God and God will say, what did you do with the life that I gave you? Did you do it my way or did you do it thy way? So the absolute certainty, and it's a challenge, and it's a challenge you cannot ignore. I would say to you this this morning, and this is the biggest challenge. Do you call God a liar? Because if you ignore this challenge, you're saying that God is a liar. That Jesus is a liar. That the Holy Spirit is a liar. And that's the most dangerous position you can ever get into. So there's the certainty. One day that curtain will come down. And when all else is gone, we'll have to face the God of heaven. So what do we do? Well, the preacher goes on, he says these words. What does God require of you? Fear God and keep his commandments. Is that easy? Do you ever go through a day when you don't do something wrong? When you haven't offended God? If you don't know what God says, I suggest you read your Bible. You start to learn what God has said. You find out what God has said in his word. And you tell me that you can go through a day, a minute, an hour, without offending God, with doing, going away from God. And yet God, the preacher says, you've got to fear God and keep his commandments. And that is absolutely impossible. I'll give you an illustration, can I? Years ago, when I was a pastor, I got a phone call one day. And it was this man who rang me, and he says, are you the pastor? I said, yeah. He said, I want you to come and see me. So I said, well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. He said, I'll give you my address and my name. So he gave me his address and his name. And I went and I knocked on his door. And I went in there and he was sitting in a chair. I can see him now, sitting in a chair. So I said, why do you want to see me? He said, I went to the doctor this week. And I've been told I've just got a few days to live. So I looked at him and I was thinking, well, how do I take it from here? He said, before you speak, he said, I want to tell you about my life. He said, I lived a life of fun and laughter. I've lived it to the full. He said, I was in the war. I was taken prisoner by the Italians. I escaped an Italian prisoner war camp. He said, I've killed people in battle. He said, when I came out of the war, he said, I was a young man full of life. He said, I lived it to the full. He said, and I've lived a life of debauchery. I've done terrible things in my life. He said, but you know, he said, I now know that the final curtain is coming. And I want you to tell me, how can I get right with this God? The absolute certainty says that there's an absolute standard. And I said, well, you've got to fear God and you've got to keep his commandments. I can't do that, he said. And he was dead right. And I'm glad he said that. Because the absolute standard says it's a standard you can't keep. Sinatra says, I've taken the blows and I've done it my way. God says, you can't. You can't reach that standard. You can't get to that standard. It's impossible because you can take the blows, but there is one who took the blows for you. And I remember speaking to that man and rather than drowning out the voice of God, I'm thankful that he listened to the voice of God. And in the end, in the last moments of his life, he could turn around and say, I know the God who made me. I know that my Redeemer lives. <clears throat> have you drowned out the voice of God this morning the absolute standard says you've got to keep his commandments and you've got to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your body but perhaps you've laughed and mocked at him and you perhaps you've outgrown this message it may be that you had a grandmother that prayed for you perhaps you had a father that looked over you and taught you these things perhaps you had a Sunday school teacher a friend who
who has prayed for you for years and years and years. And that voice is still tingling in your heart. I would say, isn't it time now that you listen to that standard and say you need to go further. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. So that's the absolute certainty you're going to die. The absolute standard is that God says that that's the position you've got to reach. But there is an amazing invitation. It is impossible for you to reach that, that standard that he has set. And that's why he sent Jesus into the world. That's why we stand before the almighty Jesus this morning. The one who hung on a cross and took the blows. The one who took the blows on our behalf. Jesus gave an amazing invitation to people. And if you like, this concludes this series. He says, have you done it my way? Have you done all the things my way? And you're fed up? What has it profited you if you've gained the whole world and yet lose your own soul? And he said, oh, here's my invitation. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. And that's Jesus' invitation to you this morning. If you're listening on YouTube, you're watching this video and it's striking something in your heart, I would say the invitation that Jesus gave to his disciples and to people 2,000 years ago stands today. Come to me. Do you want to face eternity alone? Do you want to face eternity resting on what you think is good? Or are you facing eternity saying, I'm coming unto him who can give me more abundantly, more than I can ever ask or think? The preacher had been looking at man living his life without God. He sought everything. He's looked for everything, and in the end, it's still empty. He's still lonely. He's still unfulfilled. But all oh, my friend, I will tell you this. You come to Jesus this morning, that amazing invitation. You come to the one who hung on a cross for you. You come to the one who can make you as clean as clean, who can today make you as if you've never, ever sinned. You may have ignored him for years, you may think it's too late, but if this is getting to you and if that voice is touching your heart, you can guarantee it's not too late. Because that's God's way of speaking to you. And I would invite you this morning to turn to him. I would invite you to seek his face, what he may be found. And rather than doing it my way, you follow the cross and you come to Christ and you do it his way. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that this series may have touched your heart. It may have opened up to you thoughts that perhaps you've never had before, or perhaps you have had that have been dormant for many, many years. Why not this morning? Why not this day? Why not, as you listen to this message, why not turn to him? Why not call on him? And I say this, if God calls you and you come, you're welcome. He will give a welcome that you've never had before. And when that final curtain does come down, you won't be alone. You'll be with the one who has died for you and who will take you into the presence of God. Years ago, there was a man called John Bunyan and he wrote a book called Pilgrim's Progress. And he, in his final chapter, he imagines himself when that curtain comes down and death comes to him. And he faces the river of death and he feels alone and he looks at that river and he's scared and he cries out, am I alone? And suddenly on the celestial city, the other side, that heavenly picture, the angels come down and they pick him up. They take him into the river and he says, deep, don't worry, they said, our arms are around you. And God lifted him through that valley of the shadow of death and took him into the presence of the living God. 
I have sat at the bed of people who have gone into the presence of God. I've seen people who have trusted Christ and have gone into eternity absolutely joyful that they're going to the God who they love. I'll finish with an illustration. There was a woman called Sheila. She was one of the first people I ever met in when I was a pastor. And I still remember it to this day. She rang me and she asked me to go and heal her. Hadn't been to church before, she, but she was dying of cancer. And I looked at her and I said, listen, there's a more important thing than the healing of the body. It's the healing of the soul. And I went through Psalm 23 with her. Told her that the Lord could be her shepherd. That the Lord could be with her. And she turned to Christ and she trusted Christ. And I remember going to seeing her in her last days in Brighton. And she was in a hospice. And I walked into that room and she was dying. Her husband had asked me to go. She, she wanted to see me. And I sat by her bed. And she was just about conscious. And I thought, well, I don't know. I, I should read. So I opened my Bible. I said, I want to read to you. She said, no, please, can I read? And I said, yeah. She said, what do you want to read here? I want to read this. The Lord is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I prayed and she passed into the presence of God almost as I prayed. I would say this, the message of Ecclesiastes, the firm message of Ecclesiastes is that there is another way than my way. Will you not turn with him, turn to him this morning and know him as your Lord and your Saviour. Join with billions of people have actually found that same that same assurance as I have as many others have. May God bless you all. Amen.